Hello everyone, I'm Joy Schmidt, founder and president of Vita Roos International Inc. For those of you that don't know me, I was initiated to the green roof industry 20 years ago working alongside Wolfgang Behrens, the father of green roofs. I am honored to have been involved in some of North America's most celebrated projects, including the Ford River Rouge plant, the Vancouver Olympic Village, as you may have noticed the picture behind me, and the Jarvis Convention Center. As you all know, sustainability is a noble cause, but it doesn't sell itself. However, success does not come easily. In the following video, I share with you fellow green leaders, some of the challenges I faced and the strategies I used to overcome them to build a sustainable green roof business over the past 11 years. Let's continue to retrieve our green footprint, one roof at a time, in a manner that makes good business sense and gives our corporations and communities a very real and lasting sense of pride. Hi everyone, welcome to AIM HIGH. Get your hands dirty and persevere with purpose. From Green Roof Pioneer Joy Schmidt, narrated by William Hunt. As participants in this summit, you're among today's green leaders, and, no doubt, you've learned the hard way that as good as it sounds, sustainability doesn't sell itself. So, what's it going to take to win the race to sustainability? green leaders need to share their stories of success, stories that model how to triumph over obstacles. This presentation shares what worked in green roofs on a journey that spans disinterest to celebration in the North American marketplace. As you will see, from these stories emerges a paradigm in sustainability entrepreneurship. We all want to do the right thing, but research shows time and again no matter how much people back the green cause, add a few extra dollars to a product, and you'll meet resistance. Let's face it, it's easier to do the right thing when the right thing also makes good business sense. I've also learned from personal experience that people seem to come to their own conclusions about what makes good business sense in four stages. Stage one, understand the issue. Stage two, care about impact. Stage three, believe in solution. Stage four, accept the cost-benefit ratio. If you can figure out where your audience is on this acceptance triangle at any given time, you'll know where to focus your efforts to take it to the next level. Every green leader needs to know that even when the market is disinterested or skeptical, not everyone feels that way. For every good idea, there's an early adopter. In my case, that early adopter was Ford, with a tremendous vision for the world's largest green roof, at a time when the concept was in its infancy in North America. But it did exist in Germany, and that's where I was working alongside Wolfgang Behrens, the father of green roofs. Ford knew of Wolfgang Behrens' reputation and invited us to bring our knowledge to America. My personal challenge was to balance two extremes with the skill of a tightrope walker. One, be the fire in the belly entrepreneur, inventing solutions to new conditions as they arose and getting my hands dirty along the way, quite literally, as you can imagine, in the context of planting a green roof. Two, and on the other end of the spectrum, be the polished suit able to navigate change in a big business environment. Considering that we were bringing our knowledge over from Germany, this process involved negotiating in two languages and managing a few cultural gaps along the way. I went to great lengths to avoid the infinite openings for broken telephone. Reputation in hand as having partnered in the development of the Ford Guinness Book of Records River Rouge plant, I expected doors to easily open for me as I settled into my new home in Canada. But I rubbed my knuckles raw knocking on doors to no avail. Not a problem. Just a sign to change tactics. So. Instead of focusing on the audience I thought was ripe for green roofs, I switched to the audience in the know about the work we'd done in Germany, figuring they'd have already climbed at least a few of the steps of the acceptance triangle. One of those cold calls took me right to Zeidler's door, and as an emerging advocate, 
Mr. Zeidler was interested in putting a green roof on his home. Lesson learned. Entrepreneurial gumption gets the job. At this point, in the Canadian green roof sector, our challenge morphed from finding jobs to delivering on increasingly complex requirements. When presented with the jaw-dropping vision for planting figurines across the Vancouver Olympic Village roofscape, eyebrows raised, I asked, and exactly how do you expect me to do that? To which I was promptly given a, well, you'll figure it out, with a smile that communicated respect and partnership. Inspired by the grand vision for the project, it occurred to me that cookie cutters could do the job, if they were life-size, that is. Without a moment to spare, we got a local metal plant to build these hilariously enormous cookie cutters, which work just as well for separating plants in the sky. Olympic Village was tremendously gratifying work because we pushed the creative limits together. The Roastery Coffee House represented an interesting opportunity to use a green roof to go beyond sustainable and add monetary value to a business. A coffee shop with a rooftop patio is nice, but a coffee shop with a rooftop patio surrounded by green, well, that's just a piece of zen in the heart of the busy downtown core. It's still one of my favorite lunch spots, and every once in a while I end up giving a talk to a tour bus chock full of kids coming to check out the garden in the sky. So, we began the story of the zealous early adopters at Ford, and now we arrive at a different type of first, government. The mayor and 10 city councillors had to buy in before we got the green light to proceed with the City of Waterloo project. This process involved discussions and presentations that spanned a three-year period. But once won over, we didn't just gain a client, we gained an influencer. From the extensive coverage of the project on the city's website that even includes an active rooftop webcam, to the invitation to participate in subsequent city projects. Sustainability entrepreneurship is about always being two steps ahead. So we're already asking ourselves, what's next in green roofs? We need to create the next generation of advocates. We need to expand the product and expand the value equation. Butterfly gardens, urban vegetable gardens, wall gardens. And we also need to increase market understanding of how, why, and when sustainable equals good business sense. Reduce landfills, reduce maintenance and replacement cost of roof, develop opportunities to employ green roofs as profit centers. Finally, we need to continue to reinvent the product for expanding markets, climates, and design requirements. Thank you to all involved in the green roof projects that were shared in this video.